If you've been following along in the tutorial so far, you may have noticed that we've forgotten a few elements in our markup, and we're going to fix some of those things now. One of the things that we've forgotten to put in is an image. Well, I really didn't forget that. I wanted to wait until later um, when we were actually talking about design. The reason why is because we're going to do one large image, and we don't really know what size that image is going to be yet, because we haven't designed our page and our page width and everything else and we'll be talking about that in this tutorial the other thing that I actually did forget was the button learn more on the bottom right so let's go into our code and fix these elements first off we want to locate where our main image is going to go and I made a little space there to put in a placeholder we're going to insert a placeholder with insert image objects image placeholder and give it a name main IMG and uh, I can make the the width 600 the height 200 doesn't really matter at this point and alternate text will be the main image and of course we'd give that a real name if we had it anyway you can also type in this code image name equals and source you'd give it nothing and you definitely have to give it a width and height and an alt tag in order for it to work in browsers um, so that you know that an image goes there even if you don't have an image. In Dreamweaver we'll actually be able to see some sort of placeholder but if we were to save this page and test it in something like Opera or other browsers we may just see some sort of placeholder there without an image and that's totally fine at this point. Now the other thing that we want to do is add in our button and this button is going to go after from design to brand development learn more is what's going to happen there and one of the things that I do like about um, Dreamweaver is the ability to add code even in design view if you right click on the tag where it says P down here because we're currently on that paragraph I can add a class to it just by typing it in class equals learn more now one quick thing about this particular class is that I'm using the class called learn more and that definitely is associated with this button um, learn more but that means that every learn more button will be exactly the same style now what we could do is make this have some sort of like button right or something like that name uh, class that's a little bit more generic but that's something really up to you. You just want to know what that it has a class that you can um, make it look the way you want. Now if you want to look at just the code view here's what it looks like right there. P class equals learn more and that's really it. Now I can take away some of that space there doesn't have to be there. Alright, so right now we've got our basic markup done, but there are even holes in this that we haven't thought about. We haven't done anything like given our title. Um, it'd be nice for it to have a title that makes sense. Mental, let's see, what is this thing called? Environmental brand. And that's the home page. Now we also could put in our meta tags, our meta name and description. This is just something that if we wanted to add it, it would be a smart thing. Um, you can do that um, from, let's see, table objects. I should know where this thing goes. Haha, <laughs> HTML head tags. There we go. There we can add our descriptions and keywords. It's a really nice idea. This will be environment sample HTML5 and that's all I'm going to put for right now whoops let's go ahead and put that underneath now we can also do that with our description but I'll leave that up to you now there is one other thing in here which is really important and that is that in order to make sure that older browsers can understand any of these new um, header and nav and and aside and article and section tags we need to create um, we are we need to add some code that allows them to know that these tags exist so I'm gonna go over to my HTML shim um, enabling script 
and I'm going to grab it from there. Now, it gives you the code right there. All you have to do is copy and paste that into the top of your document. So I'm going to put it right before the closing head tag, right there. And what that does is um, this links to this JavaScript, which enables um, these new uh, tags so that if you're in a in Internet Explorer 9 or before it will make them so that they, you can still use CSS and they'll render and everything else. So anyway we've now kind of fixed our page and so let's take a look at what we're going to be doing in our next tutorial. What we're going to be doing is working with the widths that we have and kind of laying out our design with CSS. Now we've got some you know major things to deal with. One of the things that we have to deal with is the main page width itself. Now we haven't fixed that in code yet so we're actually going to do that. If we look in, at what we have here we have our body and then the header immediately starts. And one of the things that we typically have is some sort of container or wrapper or something like that. So instead of using something like a section though we definitely want to use a div so I'm gonna call this div ID equals page wrapper and that needs to be equals alright now there's our div ID page wrapper now I'm gonna go down to the bottom of my page and right before the end body tag. I need to close that div. And it'd be a good idea for us to put, of course, the code in here, a little bit of comment in there that says end the page wrapper. That would be really, really helpful. Now we're going to need that for our the size of our page overall. And I think that's the last major um, HTML code that we have to add. The other widths that we're going to have to deal with are going to be the column on the left and the column for our content on the right, um, and then the width of our image and the width of our CSS up here on the top, our navigation. So in order to look at how we decide what our widths are going to be, we typically deal with what's called a grid system. If I look at this page right here, the gridsystem.org, it shows me kind of a simple page layout where I've got six columns going across, and they've got some articles about grid systems, which are really nice. But we can also show the grid, which is really nice. And you'll now be able to see those columns a little bit better. You can see that we also have a little margin on the left and right of the entire document. And then over each column, we actually have the same margins left and right, so that the gutter in between, the um, space in between these two columns, is actually twice whatever that um, margin is on the left and right of each individual column. Now the way that we typically figure this out is use some sort of grid system. The 960 grid system is a very common one and actually I believe that this one is actually using that um, or a variation of it. And the total width of all of this is typically 960 pixels and that's because that's a pretty good size um, for most modern websites and it works really well with a grid system. It's very easy to calculate um, a number of different ways, which we'll look at. Now, our website is not actually quite as wide, so we may find out that this grid system isn't really what we want. Now, if you're not into the grid system, there are other frameworks out there, like Less Framework, which what's great about this one is that it, it does um, 10 columns, and this one's at 992, which is a little bit larger, and then you can do 8 columns, um, 3 columns, and 5 columns for different mobile, tablet, and desktop layouts. It's pretty neat. Now the 960 grid system is the one that a lot of people have used for a long time, um, and so it's become popular, and that's because it's very easy to figure out. There are two ways to do it, either 12 or 16 columns. Let's look at the 12 column one and figure out how they've done it. Basically, you have a margin on each column of 10 pixels on the left and the right. If your columns, each um, 
width of each column is 60 pixels. If you have 10 on the left and 10 on the right, then you have your next column with 60 and 10 and 10, then it's pretty easy to calculate all the different widths because you have 60 plus 10 on both sides. That means that you're going to have a total of um, uh, 80, I guess, because you have 60, 70, 80. Um, right here, we have the column in between. That means it's just 20 pixels in between. So 60 plus the 20 plus another 60 is 140. And then, of course, we go on to figure out all the different widths. Now, the nice thing about this system is that you can go ahead and use their CSS and apply it, or you can just use their numbers and apply it. And if this doesn't really work for you, then you can actually even use their variable grid system where you can put in the numbers that you want. You can decide how many columns you want. Do you want 10 columns? Do you want each column to be 70 pixels wide? And do you want 30 pixels in between? Whatever you do, make sure that you don't have any funky numbers. No um, 77 column widths, you know, are 77 pixels and 32 pixels here. Make sure that they're whole numbers because it makes it so much easier for you to kind of figure out. Now this one kind of works pretty well. This one is 70 um, pixels for each column. It's got 10 columns and the gutter width of two. If I take the three right here and then the others, the, let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then it kind of gives me some nice widths that are kind of close to this. So that's really, whoops, uh, that's one I'm on. Um, that really could kind of work. Now, we don't even have to do this. We can actually generate a CSS layout ourselves as long as we're being conscientious about um, using column widths and gutter widths and, and uh, everything else that makes sense. I do really like using a grid system and I definitely would suggest it. I don't necessarily think that you have to use the 960 grid system. I really love the variable grid system because each design might be different and you might not want them all to be exactly the same width. And this will let you control that a little bit better. But another tool that I found that I really like is the CSS layout generator. In this one, we can choose the doc type we want. We can even have a CSS reset. And there's a number of different ones that we can use. And those are always great because they, those allow you to take away margins and padding and things like that from common elements. And we can do a fixed layout that we choose the width that we want. So I'll do it's going to be 880 pixels wide. I'm going to specify the height for my header to be 150 pixels. I'm going to use one sidebar, sidebar on the left, and that is going to be a 300 pixel sidebar. Oops, I've done that before where I've typed that in and taken it away. My footer, I'm going to specify 100 pixels high, and I'm going to go ahead and just say get the link. I'm not going to worry about these other items right now. So there you'll see I have generated a very simple layout. The problem with this layout at this point is that I haven't really taken into consideration padding or anything like that for the content inside these different divisions, but it's given me a very workable um, starting point for laying out my page. Now another thing that I like about it is that you can download the file and then you can take a look at the code that's inside there. Let's see what code they've generated. They've given us basically the same thing that we have. The doc type of HTML. They have the enabling script, um, which is the HTML5 shiv or shim. They have the keywords and description that we talked about. They have a link to their style sheet, which we haven't gotten to yet. And notice this. They also have div id equals wrapper, div, uh, here's the header, id equals header, kind of like what we've done as well. Section, and they've given it an ID. They've got a, a container inside there, which may or may not make sense. Each one's a little bit different. Um, and then, of course, they've got their aside in there. We have our aside before the section, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. 
Um, and then we've got our footer here, and then they end the wrapper and then end the page. So it's a very similar layout to what we have. Whatever we choose to do doesn't really matter. It just makes the most, um, the most important thing is that we choose something before we just start running into our CSS so that we've kind of figured out what we want. I'm going to go ahead and kind of use this as a guide because it will help us um, design this page kind of the style that we want. So I need to preview, let's see, the versions here to find out exactly what widths that we're going to be dealing with because that's what we're going to deal be dealing with right there. We've got that 250 pixels here and then the 610 pixels there for our page width and we've got that 880 pixels for the large image and this will just give us a nice um, starting point for our CSS in the next tutorials. So let's go on at this point.